Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations. Here to describe an antenna I call the Perky H. The reason I call it a Perky H is because it's it's shaped exactly like an H. Not sideways H, which would be a lazy H, or inverted H, which would be the same as a Perky H, okay, except the station would be up high in the air. Well, okay, 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 Stanley, shut up. What I'm getting at is here is it's a phased array of two vertical dipole antennas. But they're not just ordinary dipoles, they're folded dipoles. So that rather than 73 ohm purely resistive impedance at the feed points, they offer a roughly 300 ohm purely resistive uh, impedance at the feed points. So you, it's a reasonable match for 300 or 450 ohm ladder line, which you can use to connect two of these antennas and then just separate the two antennas by a half a wavelength in free space, which is roughly 492 divided by the frequency in megahertz, if I'm not mistaken. 492 divided by the frequency in megahertz will give you the length in feet of a half wavelength in free space. And that is the distance by which these antennas should be separated. Not a half an electrical wavelength, which would be a little bit less because the velocity of the factor of the line is about 95%. No, it should actually be a full wavelength or a full half wavelength in free space this link they should, they should then be connected by a length of ladder line and that ladder line should be fed right at the center by another length of ladder line which can be any length going to a trans match and the trans match should be where the station ground is located this should be where the substantial electrical and radio frequency ground of the station are located and this transmatch obviously should be as close to the ground as you can get it preferably right on the ground or even a little little under it uh, at uh, w1aw they had an arrangement where they had an automatic antenna tuner placed in something like a dog house uh, when i worked at uh, that station the headquarters station of the american radio relay league they had an antenna, I believe it was just an ordinary open wire fed dipole, but it had an, an automatic antenna tuner in a, in a doghouse. And it would be nice if this were an automatic antenna tuner, but um, failing that, you can put your station right here and do away with having to have any coaxial cable run to your station. But from there, you can run any length of 50 ohm coaxial cable to your radio. Uh, Remotely controlled transmatch. Now these aren't going to be perfect one-to-one -one standing wave ratios here. 300 ohm character, um, feed point impedance, purely resistive. If you use 450 ohm line, you're going to have a slight mismatch. And of course then here you're going to get an impedance which is uh, half of either one of the antennas alone, which whatever that is. But you can pretty much ignore the standing wave ratios on these lengths of ladder line because the, the loss in ladder line is so low that a, a high standing wave ratio doesn't really matter and that's one of the uh, great assets of ladder line or open wire line and one of the reasons that radio amateurs still use this kind of line today but what you get is a broadside array of half wave folded dipoles so you should get roughly three decibels of gain over a single dipole um, that's power gain they're separated by a half a wavelength so there'll be a half a wavelength propagation delay remember they're separated by a free space half wavelength so the wave coming off of this antenna will exactly cancel the wave coming off of this one going either straight towards the right uh, or straight towards the left. They'll be out of phase exactly. 180 degrees out of phase going straight to the right and left. 
in phase coming right at you or going right away from you. So it is a bi-directional broadside array. And going straight up, it won't have any radiation at all because you're off the ends of the dipoles. Going at angles here, it'll have kind of an intermediate pattern. But the main objective is to get that bi-directional three decibels of power gain coming either right at you or right away, going right away from you. And uh, on the 14 and possibly the 10 megahertz bands and above, it's perfectly feasible to make this uh, a rotatable array a little harder on the 7 megahertz band or and below, but you can make a wire array and you can make this folded dipole out of ladder line. That's what I would do. Uh, seeing as we're already using a whole lot of the stuff, just buy as much of it as you possibly can get <laughs> and just use it all for this. Or you can use TV ribbon, uh, 300 ohm TV ribbon, but it, that won't handle as much power. I recommend the old 450 ohm ladder line. Just use the best stuff you can get and use, uh, use it. Buy more than you think you'll ever need because you'll never have quite enough no matter how much you get, right? Stanley Gibalisco's axiom of antennas number G-666. With that little bit of whimsical cleverness, which I'm sure just made you immensely happy, I will say 73, which means... Best regards in ham radio jargon. Wishing you luck with if you decide to build an antenna like this. I'll leave the supports up to you. And I will also say so long, which in my native CW fist shall forever after translate to da 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 da.